Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be addressing the MSI Dynamic Dashboard 3 issue that I've gotten a number of requests on because I did do the live stream build with the Godlike. As shown here, we are literally streaming off of the X870E Godlike machine that was built uh, last month, or actually now I think it was almost two months ago. But anyway, the point is, there's an issue that's starting to crop up with the LCD panel on the Easy Bridge, which is the thing that you guys can see here on the screen that's showing the CPU temperatures, the fan speeds, the pump speed, the voltage, that kind of stuff. So that that dynamic dashboard three is what they call it, which is the easy bridge, which is the component on the godlike, which is removable. It is magnetically attached to the motherboard. So that thing is starting to have a problem where potentially the data in it, in its, uh, I guess it's ROM or something, it gets corrupted somehow. I myself experienced this issue back when I was working on that video that recently went up on the channel regarding 192 gigabytes of RAM. So while I was doing memory training, the issue started happening where I saw the infamous loading screen. So I was able to resolve it following the steps outlined in an MSI support thread, and I will link that thread in the description of this video. So if you are running into this problem and you're desperately looking for a solution, hopefully this will help you out. So I was able to fully resolve the issue, but I do not believe that there is a motherboard BIOS fix currently that fully fixes the problem. The current firmware on MSI's website is, the latest one is A22, released December 20th of last year. So this, I tried updating to this, but it I did not experience the problem with the dashboard screen messing up until after I had updated to this BIOS. So I updated to this BIOS and then I started trying to film the video for the 192 gigabytes of RAM. And then I started seeing the problem. So I don't believe this description. I assume it's referring to the dashboard, but I don't know for a fact, unless someone from MSI can confirm that. This I don't believe this. So I would stay away from the latest BIOS. In fact, ever since I downgraded, after fixing the issue and downgrading back to the BIOS that I was on previously, which is the A15 BIOS, I have yet to experience the issue again. So, so far mine, as you guys can see on the screen, has been working totally fine after doing the fix and then downgrading to A15. So I'm going to remain on A15 because this one still has the latest Agisa code. So there isn't really much of a reason, as far as I'm concerned, to go beyond A15 until MSI fully addresses the issue. So the issue is talked about quite in depth at this point because the problem first was mentioned on MSI support forums on November 29th. So this thread started, again, this will be linked in the description of the video. Basically what you wanna do is you wanna to go to this, assuming you're experiencing the problem, this MSI support thread, and you want to find the post right here that was on December 20th. And there's a link to another post and actually we'll just bring that one up. So right here, from uh, active member administrator Pangolin had sent a message on December 5th saying that MSI is checking the problem and advises to update the firmware again. But the workaround currently is to download what's called the MSI update tool and to update the data, not the firmware. You update the data. So that this didn't work for a lot of people. And this is updating the firmware, I think is causing more problems. So I would avoid that. I personally did not update the firmware and I'm not experiencing the problem anymore. Download the MSI update tool. So that, that executable, the full file name is MSI underscore 4490 underscore update tool dot exe. You can get that from that message board on MSI support site from Pangolin as we just showed earlier. That's step one. Step two, shut down the PC. So this is the godlike motherboard PC. Then you want to let the power drain. So what I would do here is you can, you can technically shut off the power supply switch, but what the guy on the site was saying is disconnect the power cable. So you literally disconnect that way. It ensures that the capacitors fully drain out on the dynamic dashboard. So there's nothing there that's still retaining any sort of power to the device. So disconnect the power cable. So somebody was saying, do this, let it sit for one hour. I think that is excessive. I don't think it takes that long. I personally 
let the power drain for three minutes. I personally waited about three minutes. You can wait five minutes if you want. I think that's enough. I mean, it worked for me. So you basically want it to drain the capacitor's power on there. So once that's done, boot into Windows, and then you want to run the update tool. But when you do this, you want to click on update data. You want update data. And I cannot stress this enough. You want to update the data first. You do not want to click on update the firmware or the FW. You do not want to click on that. I have read on that thread, a lot of people that did that ended up either bricking the easy bridge or it just didn't work for them. Like it didn't fix the problem and they were back to square one. So do not update the firmware. Update the data. Do not update the firmware. So do not update the firmware. And then after updating the data, the dashboard will turn off and reboot. So after this, assuming you get to the screen where it says update data completed successfully, then you can watch the dashboard. It will basically reboot and it'll come back and then everything will be working fine after that. I think it may tell you to re like reboot the PC after completing that procedure for updating the data. And if you if it if it does, then you just go ahead and do that. And then that's basically it. So that's this is exactly what I did. This resolved the problem for me. I did this back when I was making that video for the 192 gigabytes. That was more than a week ago now. And I have since not run into the problem at all. Now, after I did this, I guess I'll add a, an extra step. For those of you that are on the latest BIOS or one of the newer BIOSes, I recommend, after you have it resolved, downgrade the X870 Godlike BIOS back to the A15 BIOS. If you wanna if you wanna follow me in terms of like every single step that I did, the last step that I did was downgrade back to A15. And I have remained on A15 since resolving the issue. So I'm not going to update the BIOS on this board until MSI confirms that they have in fact fixed the problem with the easy bridge and the dynamic dashboard because it is possible for them to do a BIOS update for that or they're going to have to release it as a separate executable which is totally fine because that's kind of how the update tool works anyway. So anyway, that's going to be the fix on how to resolve the MSI dynamic dashboard 3 issue also known as the MSI Godlike Easy Bridge issue. So for those of you that are running into this, hopefully this helps. And if you have any other tips on how to resolve the problem, assuming you resolved it successfully, leave a comment below so that everybody can follow. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.